wanted to talk to you about Phil Ramuno. He was my last guest on the podcast. He is your dear friend. I only know Phil because of you, because I took your sitcom acting class, which was quite an enigma, quite a unicorn that there even existed a sitcom acting class. And I found you, Mary Lou. You changed my life. You changed my acting. And I met Phil through you. And the two of you wrote, of course, the sitcom handbook. So uh, Phil was in last week, and he gave us some hacks, some jokes. He gave us about four different comedy rules, and I was wondering if you could give us a few. Oh, um, don't move on the joke. K's and P's are funny. Comedy comes in threes. Um, say the line, then go. Is that enough? <laughs> yeah, good, good. Say the line, then go. We're not often taught that, right? We try to be naturalistic. So how is sitcom different than being natural, than being Brando, you know? <laughs> well, first of all, there's imposed rhythms on it. And you have to, if you really, really want to get the most out of a joke, um, you will observe those comedy rules. Um, uh, and then the other thing is, is, it's not only does it have imposed rhythms, but, you know, it's a structure, you know, there's a setup, there's a punchline, there's a setup, there's a punchline. And all the jokes have different structures to them, and you have to be able to recognize them. Um, and, you know, it's about, you know, dying is easy, comedy is hard. <laughs> and so, can you expect an actor to know how to do all of those things if they haven't read your book and they haven't taken your no. course. Where As would they have fact, picked those skills up? Phil and I wrote this book because we found very, very, very talented actors coming from pools like the Broadway stage, to even doing musical comedy, um, to dramas, who um, had no problem being good actors and acting naturalistically, but they weren't funny. And um, mm. uh, Phil and I thought, well, a lot of it's just not knowing. These are smart people. They can pick things up. Um, and then, of course, you know, you can teach people rhythms. You know, you can hear it. I found, coincidentally, right. that, you know, because I taught so many children for so many years, uh, which was also my other great interest in directing, um, was directing children's programming for so long. Um, Mm. that the kids who watched TV had subliminally picked up and could hear these rhythms just like they learned how to sing Happy Birthday. You know, they knew the wow. tune. So they knew the tune of sitcoms mm -hmm. from watching, you know, Saved by the Bell or um, My Two Dads or whatever those shows were. They or were even watching. like Hannah Montana. Yeah. In a month. So it was, it was just, a, a, and then for some of them, it was just then saying, oh, this is just like, so giving them a, a, a um, analogy mm -hmm. or a, 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 a similar situation where this is like this. Right, right. Yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, I feel so fortunate. And I remember we even had a showcase. We invited people. It was a phenomenal class. Are you still teaching in between I your jobs? Do you that, even have time? Do you do? You know, I, I people keep asking. And if I return to one class, that will be it. I will return and do my on-camera sitcom career class, which is basically a scene study class. Actually, it starts out with a Friday night um be learning how to find the joke and identify jokes so that when you approach your script analysis for the work you do on camera, multi cameras, you, I usually do three cameras in a studio on the Saturday and Sunday where you work three to four times at least. Um, and sometimes I bring in guest directors, which is lots of fun because then you get to be directed oh, by someone yes. other than just me. Um, and so if I go back, I will probably do that again. I haven't taught anything in person thus far since COVID. Um, I'm going to be teaching class next week for next level 
which is a, a, a group I, I will guess occasionally guess. Yeah, for. I've heard of Next but Level. Asked, yeah. Yeah, I've asked that everybody wear a mask while I do it. So. Okay, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are still masking in classes. Um, if someone wanted to meet you or wanted you to see their work, I'm guessing you don't have time to go out and scout people or see that much theater. Um, how would they get you to see their work? Are you open to um, people writing you? How would they see you or meet you? Well, usually through auditions. <laughs> Yeah, so usually, but if they you know, can't even get in the audition, because I'm, I'm talking about actors who are beginning, who really want to work and get into sitcom. And those are a lot of actors who are listening right now. Well, I, I think uh, that they I'm, may not... I'm, the, I'm the end game. You mm. get to me because you've done all that other work that got you an agent, that got you the audition. Um, mm. I'm... I, since I, I, I only give master classes like these rarely, maybe once a year, it'll be now once for the first time in four years the next time I teach it. Um, I'm really looking for, for people who, you know, occasionally I'll go, oh, wow, this person is gifted. I mean, I got a call from my agency the other day that the, um, uh, an actress named Hung Chow, who's nominated for Academy Award, had wanted, People Magazine wanted to interview me because I had encouraged her to come to Hollywood. You know, oh, wow. so, um, I do a lot of um, uh, uh, advocacy work, but mostly for directors now. And in terms of actors, you know, you know, if, if someone had contacted me through someone who they knew, you know, and said, you know, I've read your book, I've practiced your technique, you know, um, I would say, you know, send me a clip of something uh, of you on YouTube or, you know, occasionally I will How look great. at that. I will say that your okay. currency is if you tell me how many hits it's gotten. You know, I don't want someone to record an audition just to show me. That's that. You right. know, I, I wish I had the time to do that for endless, mm -hmm. endless actors who would like access. But mm -hmm. that that that's not the case anymore. You know, I so, I was nominated for two yeah. Emmys this year, and I'm I'm. I now have a development um, part of my career. So m my time is, you know, is very, very precious. I'm squeezing in, you know, just a chance to talk to you, Rachel. Because yeah, I just for us to talk. Yeah, and I appreciate it. And for your yeah. mission. Um, but, um, and I go to theater when I can. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, I saw a show on Broadway uh, just before Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving as well. But, you know, that show was written by the person who created the show I direct, Miss Pat, which premieres tomorrow night, mm. third season, um, on BET+. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I remember being blown away by some of the talent on stage um, in mm. Jordan e. Cooper's uh, play Ain't No Mo. Um, I just got invited to something at Santa Monica Playhouse that I'll try to go to that... Uh, Tina Carlisi in, is in, so, um, but I am very, very appreciative, and this isn't just about now, it was always appreciative, appreciated by me, if someone said, you know, I'm doing this play because I want to do some work, um, right. but when someone was truthful about, you know, it's a small part, um, I just wanted to let you know I'm doing it, um, or mm. someone saying, it's not very good, don't bother, <laughs> <laughs> and um, because I will tell you, I, I have had actors who I've been very, very supportive of who have burned bridges with me by inviting me to mm. everything, every single thing they've done. And um, uh. if it's a waste of my time, you know, or they might even say, listen, I got a tiny part in this, but the person doing the lead in this show is remarkable and you have to know who they are. They're the funniest person on the planet. You know, first of all, it's a generous thing to do. And if a person says it that is. to me, I'll go, wow, you know, I, I might take the time to go do that. Right now, I'm very, very, very COVID aware. So sitting in a theater where um, people aren't, haven't shown vaccination cards or haven't, um, uh, I know, haven't right. tested, you know, I mean, I tested eight, seven no, times last it. week alone. That's so, crazy. But good, I, I mean, know, I was, I'll I was never get it. 
but I was hosting a, um, a wedding at my house and I had to be careful. And I just came. Oh, of from, course. Yeah. yeah. I just have to, you know, and, and I was at a super spread. Seven... I was at the DJ Awards on Sunday night. There were hundreds and hundreds uh... of people. And I got COVID at the Emmys. Or probably did. No. I mean, I had it the following week. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's awful. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm still figuring out how to navigate that. I did host one event and I just kept moving because I, I didn't want to stay in one place for too long. I still mask and want to take care of my family. And, you know, although I feel a little bit more wiggle room and freedom of walking into a store and out and not panicking, so, yeah. so, um, it's, it's still very much on my mind. And I do hope that things change and we can go back I to know. normal. I really wish auditions were in person. Like that's a big one yeah. for well, me. Well, I will tell you, no, well, well, but I, for the last three shows I've done, I've had callbacks. I've had callbacks on Zoom so that I can interact with the actors, you know, and I'm hoping that it becomes, if we don't go back to in person sooner than later, that directors insist mm -hmm. on having um, auditions on Zoom so that we can see the work and right. refine what the actors are doing. Exactly, because sometimes, you know, I, I make my choices and I, I could be, you know, I, I, I come from authenticity, but then I think, well, a director might give me a slight adjustment into how they see it. And then I'd book the job. Yeah. And well, I don't I have that now. You, it's, I will tell you that an actor who makes choices is always my first go-to kind of actor. Yes, for sure. An Make actor, a strong choice. Yeah. Um, because I can, we might disagree on the choice, but I can direct you to do something else. But I know that you are aware you have looked at the script, you have made choices, and that's the kind of actor I'd prefer to work with any time, any day Good. of the week. Great, yes, I agree 100%. Point of view is everything. Um, we only have another minute here because you have to go and I have to go teach a class. Um, what's coming up? Anything else you wanna share? And of course, your Instagram so we can all follow you. Um, Mary Lou Belli. Uh, and I, I will go back for the fourth season as an exec producer, again on the Miss Pat show on BET Plus. Um, and I'm waiting to hear if a pilot I set up at NBC is gonna be greenlit or not, yes. based on four books that I have. <laughs> so we'll see. we'll see if that happens. And and more wow. development for me. I'm thrilled. It's so fun watching you grow. You know, because Thanks. I already met you, you were already successful, but I, I see you expanding now into producing and, and creating your own projects and keep up the great work. It's such a pleasure to see you. Oh, thank you. Such and, a pleasure to see uh, you. And I'm so, you know. We'll people, keep in touch. I hope people realize the gift they have by how you give back by teaching. So you're lucky to be studying with thank her. Thank you. Thank you. That means so much to me. She's not, she just doesn't wear the jewelry. She gives them out. <laughs> okay. Right. It is, a, it is an act of, of, of generosity, acting, producing, directing, right? We're giving, we're sharing with the audience and we pass it on. So thank you, Mary Lou. Talk to you soon.